Welcome everybody to Travel Mall. I'm really pleased today to have two executives from the Travel Corporation, one of my favorite companies I've known for decades, uh, with us to tell us about some new developments on their end. And here with us first is Ellen uh, Betridge, who's the global CEO of UniWorld and also heading something that TTC calls the Velvet Collection. Good morning, Ellen. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's really nice. You're in Los Angeles, I understand. Yes, it's a beautiful sunny day here. Uh, not that that's unusual. Uh, so yeah, absolutely gorgeous to be here in, in Southern California. What is the Velvet Collection? Yeah, you know, you know, um, during this, this time down, uh, we took an opportunity to look at our businesses. And I think the one thing about TTC that always holds true is that they're continuing to look at their businesses and evaluate them and figure out how do we best support our travel advisors so they can best support our customers. So what we did is we brought together all the premium and luxury sales teams for African Travel, Red Carnation, Uniworld, uh, Insight, and Luxury Gold. So we looked at all of their, all these sales teams and we looked at who were they servicing today. And we saw an amazing overlap, right? So we saw that 56% of the time we're all visiting the same travel agencies, oh, right? Yeah. And talking to the same people. So, you know, it's an opportunity for us to have, to look at how we have a, a, a really a strategic account manager is what we're calling them, overseeing those accounts. And then we took the smaller accounts that maybe only give us one or two bookings a year, and we're gonna provide them with the support of what's called the partner services coordinators. And we've got a team of them that sit here in Los Angeles, and they're from all the different brands. They're all cross-trained, as are the strategic account managers, so that they can best service our advisors. Now, the other thing that we did that's absolutely, the, one of the things we probably should have done years ago is we looked at our Salesforce data and we've always kept it that Uniworlds was here, Insights was here, Luxury Gold was here. No one was, there was not ever a place where they all interject together to be able to look at a, an account holistically. So now we're looking at those accounts from one, one view and that's from the Velvet Collection view. So together with our Salesforce data, they can actually go in and use the, the strategic um, training that they've received, something we call CSP, Consultative Selling Process. And they'll go in and they'll talk with that agency about, oh, I see last year you sold so much Red Carnation, so much African travel. Wait a minute, why aren't you selling Uniworld, right? Mm. And so it's an opportunity for us to open the doors and have new conversations with people and to drive more business for both them and for us. It makes so much sense. It does make sense. No, and that's the thing about it. I think that even if there wasn't COVID, this makes so much sense. Um, you know, when I saw that 41% of the agencies across all of ours together, for only 41% of them sold, they sold one brand. That's it. So yes, you had 59% who sold more than one brand, but 41% just sold was selling one of the brands. And if you just move that number slightly, just think about how much more business we can have and actually deeper relationships. Deeper relationships uh, and you can, it's one email they receive. The yep. newsletter, suppose you're gonna get a Velvet Collection newsletter, sometimes focusing on this brand, sometimes focusing more on another brand. You can, look at their total production of all the brands and, and possibly reward them for the total production. Absolutely. You know, we're in our early stages of this. Um, I'm already just so pleased though with the training that's gone underway and now we've really started the outreach. So we spent a few weeks really training up the team. You know, there's an advisor has to be able to feel confident in the salesperson who they're meeting with. So we took the time to ensure they're all trained and now they all have their buddy as well. So my, the Uniworld person has an insight buddy and they know who the African travel specialist is to go to when they need that. They know who all the players are on Red Carnation to get the support that they need there. You know, so that when they do go to talk to the agency, they can actually have a strategic plan as they're going forward. 
what might be the new normal for luxury travel and how will you help the travel agents be ready for that whatever new normal is for luxury travel? Yeah, I think, you know, I think the new normal has to be, um, it, it's going to change. So just like COVID, it's just constantly, constantly, constantly changed. So I think you have to have advisors who are willing to go with, the, go with it, right? They've got to be willing to change and to adjust their strategies as they move forward. I think they're very smart, though, to pick a partner right? To have a partner that they fully understand every aspect of what they're doing, have a strong communication and a strong relationship with those partners. Uh, maybe not be all things to all people, right? Maybe be a little more specific as to how they're best supporting their customers. And it, through some, an organization like TTC, you actually have the best of all the worlds, right? You're able to offer them incredible African safaris. You're able to give them beautiful hotel stays. You're able to give them a river cruising, and then you're, of course, going to be able to give them some fantastic tours all over the world. The house bookings uh, doing for 2021 or even 2020. Yeah, so for, you know, 2020 obviously is coming down to a, a slow end. Uh, we are uh, here at Uniworld, we are still hoping to put off a few voyages in, in, Aust in um, Egypt. So I have quite a few passengers booked for the holiday time in Egypt. And so we're working very close with our partners to figure out how we can make that happen, if it's the right thing to do, right? So it's just really assessing all the different points. So we're making that decision very shortly. But then I look at into the next year and, you know, um, from a river cruising perspective, we're very fortunate because we don't really get started until the end of March. So we have a few months to kind of take a deep breath, kind of get everything in order. Um, you know, across our ships, we're actually spraying all our ships with something called premium purity. And it's across the Red Carnation hotels as well. So this is actually a coating that goes across all of the services that actually helps to actually, it's like a self-defense against um, uh, uh, bacteria, spores, uh, viruses sticking to surfaces. So we're going to be doing that. Then, of course, we're going to have, you know, the temperature checks and we have people wearing masks and doing the, um, you know, wearing the um, and social distancing. Um, but uh, I look at bookings and uh, I don't think our customers are too afraid. Uh, 2020 look, 2021 looks actually quite, quite strong, especially starting probably around June forward. Very strong. And then I look at uh, 2022 and, and we had never even been open this early before. So I'm very pleased with 2022. <laughs> the um, African safari, African touring, I would have thought would make people feel safer because they're smaller groups are kind of traveling in a bubble by themselves. Yep. Uh, has that uh, come to fruition? Is that what, what the people, the, the consumers are thinking? But, you know, I'm, I'm glad you brought up the bubble travel idea because I, I, I agree with that. But I actually see it across all of our brands. You know, when you're on a coach, you've only got 40 passengers on that coach. That's a bubble, right? That becomes your little bubble. Um, when you're on a river cruise, it averages 130 passengers, right? So few. And, you know, and that ship is always close to land. Less 130 passengers. It's the same people that you're working, you're with the entire time. Um, on our ships, we're also so fortunate because we have more than one dining venue. So therefore, we can actually ensure that we do have the social distancing that's necessary. Um, so I actually think river cruising is going to come back strong. I agree with you on African travel as well, because once again, it's that little bubble. It's a small group of people going out together who are traveling together. So whether it's on your coaches, whether it's um, on, on our ships, African safaris, all of them really do create that bubble travel, unlike some of the other very large, um, you know, travel vessels that are out there. So in addition to what we read from the surveys, uh, consumers are saying, yeah, one of their top priorities is, is health and safety. And all the travel suppliers and destinations are addressing that. So you add the component of a bubble to that um, within all the travel services, code, transportation, hotels, that just adds further to the uh, protection, if you will, for those travelers. Red Carnation Hotels, oh, oh I love that 
group of hotels. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> uh, of course, I have my favorites. Um, have they been open, all of them? Uh, what's what's happened over the last few months, and, and what's going to happen in the in the coming year? Right. So they, they're having kind of a staggered opening um, in South Africa. Their um, properties are open and doing very well and incredibly busy. There's a few open in London. Uh, the one over in, in Switzerland is open. So they're slowly opening. Um, and the great news is, is the guests, they trust us. You know, you know, if you've stayed at a Red Carnation or you've been on a Uniworld ship, you know the level of service and the level of care that we put there. And it really comes from our incredible team of people. Um, you know, they're our family and um, we take such good care of them and they take good care of us and they want to take care of our customers. They're all desperate to go back to work, you know, and to be in the, in the hotels. And um, we've done our very best to take incredible care of them during this time. Yeah, I, I can't see uh, B. Tolman, who really shaped uh, the Red Carnation, opening up too early, you know, putting their guests, her guests at risk for anything. No, no, she's not going to put her guests and she's not going to put her team at risk for anything. Right, the team. I'm not familiar with Luxury Gold brand. Tell me about that, please. Yeah, so Luxury Gold is probably is a, is a little notch above um, Insight Vacations. They're smaller groups, a little more intimate. Um, they're staying in destinations a little bit longer. Um, and you know, it's, it's really is about how they even have more exclusive experiences within a destination. And the mode of transportation? Um... So it varies. It could be a train, it could be a coach, it could be a, you know, it, it depends upon, uh, it could be private cars. It all depends upon how many are in the group and where they're going. Mm -hmm. And from the food standpoint, uh, is there an angle to that with luxury? Yeah, gold? so the, the food is about finding the most amazing restaurants that they can find, you know, along the way, on their journeys. You know, um, unlike the Uniworld ship or Red Carnation ship, where we control every single aspect of it within, you know, our, our little bubble. Um, you know, we have, you know, as you know, on board the Uniworld ships, um, outstanding food, also driven by Mrs. Tolman. So, you know, we think yeah, of the Red Carnation. Yeah, you got to remember that we think of the Red Carnation, the um, Uniworld ships are floating Red Carnation hotels. They truly are, and uh, and it's something I'm incredibly proud of. Including the interior design, cheese. Absolutely. Oh, oh wow. yeah. Oh no. You know, um, if you, please go on our website and take a quick look, and you can see the most incredible ships that we've built. We are just launched a new ship, actually. Um, we just put out the photographs uh, yesterday, um, and she's called the Super Ship La Venencia. And she's going to actually be in the, in the, down in, um, in Italy, right there in the lagoon. And she will you know, be, spend most of her time in Venice, but then spending a night over in Burano, going up to Chioggia. Uh, people will be able to go up to the Po River. From there, they're able to get to Bologna, come back over to Venice. It, the ship is then docked on the other side of Venice. Um, you really are right smack in the heart of it. And it's so, the vantage point, the views that you have from that ship, looking at the city, uh, it's amazing. So, and that new ship is very special. Thank you so much, Ellen. Ellen, You're very uh, welcome. Global CEO of Uniworld and now heading uh, TTC's Velvet Collection.